You ready for your present? Now go on now, pick it up. Of Leatherface. Uh, let's get into this movie. I watched it over the weekend. It's sick. It's Thanks, literally sick. I was so happy because if you're gonna do a Texas Chainsaw movie, fucking do it right, okay? <laughs> and uh, these guys did it right. So talk to me about what, how did they pitch it to you? What did they tell you? What made you want to get involved in another Texas Chainsaw movie? So it's two French filmmakers and they work together and we Skyped and they said, we want to do Terrence Malik Badlands with the Virgin Suicides. And I was like, I'm there. And they look like these cool Parisian skateboarders. They're like totally cool. And I was just like, I, I, I'm there. Send me the script whenever you want, but I'll see you in Bulgaria. <laughs> So it was, oh, you guys shot this in Bulgaria? Yeah. Wow, and it's, and it's, and it's supposed to be Texas. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. W what made them shoot in Bulgaria? Probably money. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Sam, what about you? What was your process on getting involved? Um, you know, young actor, I, I just want to work. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, I got sent the, the, the script uh, with the audition sides and stuff. And I knew what Texas Chainsaw Massacre was. I've always been a massive fan of those movies. And um, I read the script, and I don't normally read scripts. Uh, I have a hard time reading scripts, but I read the script and thought, for a horror movie, it's so character-driven, just about like the downfall of, of this kid and a sequence of events that could turn somebody into Leatherface. Well, it's the idea that Leatherface wasn't born <coughs> Leatherface, which is something that we always, mm. as fans, sort of assume, or, mm. you know, we think that he's been evil since birth, but this is this kind of depiction of, you said, that, like you said, a downfall, mm. really at the hands of a, a loving, doting, but uh, <laughs> psychotic? Easy, easy. Loving how, stuff. How would you describe your character, Verna Sawyer? In denial. I mean, <laughs> and compartmentalized. Um, she loves her kids. <laughs> she loves her kids and she teaches them to kill <laughs> right yeah that's essential she doesn't think about that right it's almost like she's justified so in a way that helped me as an actor just a character's denial can help me a lot because i'm in denial like they are so that's so that's really what you go off of when you're when you're portraying this character kind of and i'm focused on the love she has for her kids and that if anybody has some problems with some of the other stuff She's got some, she's just self-justified. Self right. Well, she lives in the woods, right? She has sort of maintained this family for, for a fair amount of time, and she doesn't want anyone to break it up. Still not an excuse, but yeah. Absolutely not <laughs> an excuse. So you, 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 meet, you talk to them, and they say virgin suicides, badlands, but then you get on set, and there's a, a lot of just sort of like sick depravity. Uh, and I say that as, as a compliment. Um, what was that like? Because you did, you, we talked about this before, you did The Conjuring, which is a, a different kind of horror movie. You know, it's not so much a gory, a gory horror movie or one that sort of trades in that kind of shock. Mm -hmm. That trades in scares. This, I think, trades in, in, in shocks. Oh, yeah, that's probably, thanks for articulating that. I was trying to define how they're different, and that's it. But um, the production designer was brilliant and has worked with them a lot. And so... Um, I thought the production is, I thought it was like a painting. I mean, it was just so much detail and weird, interesting stuff. And it was just perfect. So I loved being on the set and just seeing what he was doing. And yeah. Did you go back and watch some of the uh, original films to get a sense of that family? Yes, I did. Yeah. 
I had missed it. I, I somehow I missed that one. I don't know how. So I oh, saw it much later in my life, and I was just I really got how it's a cult classic. It's so authentic. The first one is so be it's beautiful. Like it's 16 millimeter. It's grainy. It's like it's it's that kind of beautiful thing where the filmmaker is, has talent but doesn't really know the rules yet. Right, right. So everything is kind of oddly broken right. while still working. It's an incredible film. And then you get the second one, which is just, just a straight up comedy. But I really liked it. Is yeah. that, that's the one with McConaughey, right? Uh, no, McConaughey no. is the one. Is not with McConaughey Sorry, and Dennis Hopper. Uh, Dennis Hopper is in that one, but McConaughey is in uh, one later on with like Renee, a young Renee right. Zellweger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the second one is the one where uh, it's got I can't remember the character's name, but he's got an iron that he lights on fire and then he scrapes. Ch uh, skin. Chop top. Chop top. Chop yeah, top. he scrapes skin off and then. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go, guys. <laughs> So you go, you go back and watch these and it made you excited to be a part of the, uh, the whole thing? Yeah, and especially because I knew they were going to do it their way, but I knew that they were keeping the original sort of like on an altar over here, you know, and respecting it, but also not being strangled by it, mm -hmm. you know? Are you a horror movie fan? Have you been a horror movie fan for a lot of your life? Yes, I'm a, I'm a scary movie fan, if we're going to get into the terms, you know? I mean, like, I, every, every year, a couple times a year, I'll watch Exorcist and Rosemary's Baby, you know, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think really The Exorcist, Rosemary's Baby, and Chainsaw are kind of the three, tent, like, the, big, the best movies of the genre, mm. you know? Mm. And the, you got to be exorcised. At one point. I did. It was great. What was that? What, I mean, I know that was a while back. <laughs> it's not this movie, but what, what was that like? Did you watch The Exorcist to try to get ideas, or did you watch real exorcisms on YouTube, which exists? What did you sort of look for, look towards to sort of do that role or do the, those scenes? Well, I mean, I had seen the original so often, um, and I saw that again, but I did actually see them on YouTube. You know that? You've seen them? Yeah. Okay, because that's, that's intense. That's, that, was, that was heavy. I mean, I can handle heavy stuff, and I had to take a break. That helped me a lot, though. Yeah. yeah. I, had, I mean, I watched them. I, took a, I had to take breaks as well. You can't, wow, I mean, it's I, like brief moments where you're like, holy shit, and then you kind of put it away. Yeah, so that helped a lot. Yeah. yeah. That otherworldly place, and just kind of thinking animals, just like you're not, it's not human, and you're not in the animal world. You're sort of in this, when, they're, when it seems like when they're possessed, you're in this other wor another world. So kind of dealing with that realm, you know? Wow. It's super physical to do that as well. I it imagine is. you were shooting, for, you shot that whole sequence, sequences for like three weeks. And uh, you were exactly. crazy physical doing it. Loved it. And the stunt guy, the stunt coordinator was Schwarzenegger. So he was brilliant. You know, he did the Terminator. So he's just like brilliant. And I love stunt coordinators and I like doing physical stuff. So it was, it was a blast. Wow. Yeah. And Sam, so you were, uh, you're portraying... Oh wait, we can't really we can't say what's going on. Can we talk about what it, what it what it is or what's yeah. going on? Yeah. God, I would hope so. Yeah. We can say it. I think so, yes. Okay, you are portraying a young Leatherface. Yes. And I didn't know if that was like a, I know, a spoiler but you, or but come on, I mean yeah. people are probably know it's Yeah, look, he's Leatherface. Okay, yeah, we'll I mean, talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I mean I'm usually that way careful too, but if they don't... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I don't know if people are going to see Leatherface necessarily for, like, the spoiler alert as much as they're going to see, like, what these filmmakers are going to bring to yeah, the table right, here. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, but what were you thinking? Did you go, you know, you go back and watch the movies, you see how uh, Gunnar Hansen, right, portrayed the original Leatherface. Obviously, you're of a smaller build than, than yeah. Gunnar. I have, like, I have very early memories of, you were talking about the cinematography in the original, in the original <clears throat> being stunning, and there's the... Uh, the shot where Leatherface is swinging the chainsaw and the sun setting in the background. Um, there were aspects of it that I wanted to take from from them, just out of respect. You know, he originated that role and, and respect to the audience because that's what they responded to. But I didn't try and weigh myself down too much with, with copying. You know, I, I wanted to try and do something original that was my own. I did try to stack on the weight before we started shooting because as a horror fan and as somebody that wants things to be believable, like I don't want to see a skinny guy play Leatherface. So like I was eating a ton of bread and stuff. I was just trying to eat as much as I could to like just and, and to feel physically capable. You like chainsaws in reality are very heavy, especially ones that were manufactured back in the 50s and 60s. You know, I, I wanted to feel capable, you know, like Leatherface, you look at him and he looks like he could take your head off with a slap. Yeah. You know, I, I wanted to be able to feel that way, you know? 
Um, Gunnar has this amazing thing in the in the first film and probably in the films following that, um, which is the sort of weird animal whine, whining sounds that he does throughout the film. And um, was there something that you tried to uh, emulate there or take from that? Um, un- like, not deliberately. Um, I found that whenever my character... I think my character has bursts of anger throughout the film that culminate to be a permanently rage-fueled monster. Um, but I kind of developed this battle cry for the character. Whenever he lost his tempo, it became this this battle cry. So I guess that was my version of the animalistic noises and sounds of losing control, you know. When you get angry, it was just like... Uh, the, 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 f- the first time it happened, there's a scene where uh, we're in the hospital and I'm stomping on someone's head and the director said, just go for it. And I don't mean... and I, It just came out of me. I've gone... One, two, and then rah! And I was like, oh, that's a, that's, that's a thing for the character. That's the, the beast coming out of him. And as the film progresses, the beast comes out more and more and more until he's not human anymore and he's just the beast. Right. And, you know. There's a, a lot of blood in the movie, yeah. as there should be. What was, uh, you, what was your biggest blood day, personally, when you were on set? There's a lot of them, huh? Well, I probably did more of the causing the blood, so I didn't have too much myself. And also even causing it by telling others to, to, sort, of, to sort of do it. Mm. Um, what do you, Sam? I don't know what I can say without giving spoilers away, but the, the, uh, my, my first chainsaw kill was the bloodiest day. Uh, yeah. That was that was Your first chainsaw day. Yeah. Pretty solid yeah. kill. Yeah, that was that was that was bloody. And what was amazing is um we had these we had the most incredible special effects team. Yeah. Special effects is practical, I think. Yes. Um, They're all for the most part practical as far and, as I could tell. And and for, just just for like the human psyche, uh when I'm attacking people with chainsaws and seeing all this blood fly everywhere, that's actually happening. It's not something they've added after. That happened in camera. And it's kind of disturbing because at the end of the day your brain is processing this image that you're seeing you mean the, the blood cha- is splattering in real wait what like like the the, the, the special effects blood yeah, like, yeah it was there on the day it wasn't yeah, yeah, something yeah. that they cgi'd in after you know yeah, was, what was it like i mean i'm not going to say which character this happens to but one of my favorite parts about the movie is most texas chainsaw movies and i am i'm limiting myself because i haven't seen the michael bay remake so i don't know if they did this uh-huh. is when the chainsaw actually strikes somebody it's slightly off camera or it's it's just beneath the camera where the chainsaw is hitting or someone's turned away in this if you like this the chainsaw rips people on on camera and one of the people that it tears apart uh it gets at his hands and it's awesome uh what was it like shooting that because i actually couldn't tell i mean i was like that kind of has to be practical but that looks like it'd be pretty hard to shoot it 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 was uh it was it was complex to do it's not something that we got in the first take it was something that we had to do over and over again to make it look right um but what was great about this, I don't, I don't think they've done this in the previous movies, um, the special effects department had a week where they didn't have anything to do. So they said, let's try and build a practical chainsaw with a rubber chain on it. Right. And that, I mean, that's the reason for those things looking real when you actually see the chainsaw make contact because there is a, there's a chain. It's r- made out of rubber, so it's not gonna hurt anyone, but there's actually a chain spinning on the chainsaw. It, it, it wasn't added in afterwards, like it was, it was all there. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah they were incredible. So what does that feel like when you're wielding that chainsaw with the the rubber thing on it? It definitely there's blood and there's wrists. I mean, all over it, the place. It, it helped it feel a lot a lot more practical. Um, they did do a, a, a cutaway shot with a real chainsaw cutting through a prosthetic hand, and the sound of a chainsaw in an enclosed space, the, the fear it strikes into your heart. I didn't even want to be in the same room as it. Wow. It it was. Petrifying. Were you there for that? Do you remember that? It, I was there for a little bit. They were having oh, trouble getting the hands to look real. The yeah. The hands. It sort of looked like Stephen had a human behind him, going like, you know, <laughs> and that was hard. And you had to. We had to work on that to get it right. And and then I left when they got it right. And but yeah. the, <laughs> a, a, a real chainsaw, one of those real old chainsaws. I don't ever want to be in close proximity of one of those things. I hope Unless you're not. Sequel, and you get to be, and you have to be in close proximity. <laughs> That's true. <Yeah. laughs> uh, Lily, you know, I think, but you know, you you got your start really in like in the '90s, right? In the yeah. in in the '90s, and that was a time where it was still kind of a time of like you did movies, 
right? And you mostly just did movies. I mean, as, a, as an actor, you told your agent that you wanted to be a, in film, and that's what you stayed in. And if you went to TV, that'd be kind of weird, and it'd be kind of hard to get into theater at the same time as well. And just this year, you were in American Crime. You were on... Thanks. Um, oh, for, thank for, you. For my money, the best show that television has mm. produced in a really long time. I loved how uncompromising that show mm. was, especially this past season. Uh, and you were on Broadway mm -hmm. in Marvin's Room, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And you're in fucking Leatherface. <laughs> what is that like now at this point in your career to be like, I can do all of these things, be it like, you know, the highest brow possible or like the most fun, uh, well, artfully made version of lowbrow that you could possibly do? Yeah, it's a great point. I mean, how fluid things have become, you know? Um, we really kind of, anything goes now, you know, um, for better or worse. <laughs> and, um, you, you know, I'm pretty sure I know what you're referring to. You know there. what I'm, yeah. And you could get into politics if you wanted to. <laughs> um, and so, you know, it's great. I mean, because there was a day where, and as an actor, your career could be over if you did TV. You know, um, theater's always been okay, but um, so yeah, here here I am. It's like anything's possible. No contempt prior to investigation. You know, you can kind of be like that. Sounds fun. That's not, and you know, my career's like. It'll be fine. Like, let's do it. It sounds fun. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Sam, you uh, got a couple episode arc in Mindhunter yeah, this season as so, well, yeah. right? Yeah. You were in one. You were in two episodes, right, or just one? Just the one. I think it was were... just no. It was just in the one. Okay. Just in one episode. Yeah. Well, you play Monty. Yes. You play uh, another psycho. <laughs> yeah. Where's this coming from? I honestly don't know. I I I. Played a, check your IMDb. You have a couple other horror movies coming out soon as well, right? I, I, I played a, a character on a show in the UK that was the epitome of meek and kind and sweet and like a really nice guy. And then after Leatherface, I've just sort of continued to play these quite deranged, deranged characters. Well, it's so interesting though because in the majority of Leatherface, you are a kind of meek and sweet, yeah. and kind and kind guy. Mm. You play Leatherface, but as you said, this is a character going down. Mm. You know, for three quarters of the film, you are. Mm. This meek and sweet and kind guy. Yeah, 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 and because I think you needed a contrast, you know. I think it was good to see that somebody as sweet and as meek could go completely the other way. You know, it can happen to anybody. Yeah. I mean, he had it in him because of his mother. <laughs> he has to thank her for that. But um, yeah, just sort of being a, a, at the mercy of his environment, uh, and it, it could happen to anyone. You know, if if somebody gets pushed far enough, then it can go that way. But then with Monty and Mindhunter. He did, you know, he, he didn't have a great upbringing, but a lot of people don't have a great upbringing, <laughs> you know, and it, it doesn't... Monty's based on a real, that's a real guy, right? Like he most is, of yeah. the people that they, t most of the, ki all the killers that they yeah. talk to are Yeah, real they're people. all real people, yeah. yeah. Did you have any research that you could do to look into that? I, I found out that I was doing that job, uh, like I found out a couple of hours before kind of thing. It was, it was a quick turnaround. Um, I, I, I looked I looked as much information up on him as I could, but I really couldn't find much. There's a few pictures of him, and uh, yeah, I'm one of the more well known. He's not he's not compared to like Ed Kemper and Richard Speck and and all of those guys. But I found a couple of pictures of him. He was actually very short and small in frame, which made him all the more menacing. I thought, you know, because he wasn't very physically capable. Yet it turned out he was. Right, you kind of play him hated. too, sort yeah, of. Yeah, like I wanted to in. try to shrink him because I thought that's what was what was quite interesting about him. Um, but yeah, he he didn't he di he didn't have a great time growing up. But a lot of people don't, and I think that's what made him so dangerous. He he tried to justify the heinous things he did for having a bad upbringing, and it's uh, you, they, they they're totally unaware. There, there's a line in the show, and I don't know it verbatim, but it's something like normal things happen to these men, it's just the way they process it isn't normal. And that's the key. There's something wrong where they, they uh, if you bump into somebody on the street, a normal person and go, watch where you're going. But these guys take it personally and it's a personal attack on them, you know. It was really interesting, man. It was, I didn't get to research the guy much because there's, I saw a, an article in this thing called Murderpedia, but it was, it was, no murder, PD. But it was the it, it was it was. I've gone down that rabbit. It was the bare it was the bare bones. There really wasn't much information on him, yeah. so I just you know uh, did what I could with the material, and I was really lucky. Um, David Fincher directed my scene, and I felt I felt in such great hands um, with him that it made my job a lot easier because he knew exactly what he needed. 
Yeah, we had Jonathan Groff here just earlier today. I know, I missed him. I missed him. He's great in that. They're both are. Everybody is. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Let's get some questions from the audience. Oh, you're ready to go. Hey. You are stoked. So the original from 1974 is my favorite horror film ever. I think it's a masterpiece. And so I have a lot invested in this being really good. And there's... (laughs) There are so many kind of soulless, uh, soulless remakes in films these days, but I really hope this, I think this will be good because of the directors. And I wanted to know when you were talking with them and preparing for the film, there's like eight films before this. How much of the mythology were they drawing from? Was it just the first film by Toby Hooper? And what did they say that you should watch to prepare for the new film? Thank you. Um, <laughs> Did you like the trailer? Oh, yeah. I love their film Inside. That's the main mm-hmm. reason. Okay, so mm-hmm. you're probably going to be okay on Saturday. After you see it on Friday. Because there's a lot of people who have high expectations, you know. So Saturday's going to be very interesting to see, you know, did we do okay. Um, I want to see the response from the people who are just going to a horror movie and don't get that they're going to, from the directors of Inside's horror movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. I'd love to see that, too. Um, do you want to start? I mean, because you... Um, I, 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 I kind of more took it upon myself to, uh, surround myself with like a tech Texas imagery and like do my own research on the character and what my version of it would be. Um, Julian and Alex were just very supportive of listening to ideas, which I find isn't always the case. And, uh, but they were always happy to steer you in the right direction too. You know, they wouldn't let you run off with yourself. That, that, yeah, I, I don't. I felt like we were really focused on the original, and mm. we didn't talk at all about the ones from the original to ours. Mm-hmm. And I know that they had a lot of respect for the original, and that they were keeping that in mind while we were filming. And they wanted me to see the original, and um, Badlands, Terrence Malick. It's like the best movie. And they, 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 it really was the original for them, wasn't it? They had so much trivia on it. Like, I never knew that uh, throughout the whole shoot of the original movie, Gunnar Hansen didn't shower. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't shower, so people were repulsed by him, by the smell when he was on set. Uh, and they had all this great trivia about the original movie where it, it made it clear to us, like, oh, they're going for, like, the original Texas Chainsaw kind of vibe. Yes, yes. I remember when I first saw the original and uh, he comes out and he clocks that guy in the head with mm-hmm. the hammer. Yeah, it's really yeah. the first death in the movie. Yeah. And then he drags, the guy starts shaking, you know, because he's twitching because his brain's dying. Yeah. And he drags him into the other room and shuts the steel door. I remember being 15, alone in my house. I just smoked a little pot. And I, <laughs> and I, and I, and I, and I, I jumped out of my seat and I was just like, what am I watching? That was, that was so real. Mm-hmm. That was so real. And uh, yeah, this movie has moments like that. Mm-hmm. It has one particular moment like that where I jumped out of my seat. I was I can't believe you're doing this. <laughs> I will not ruin the surprise for you guys. Yeah. Uh, next question. Who is it? Right here. Uh, Lily, you're so amazing in everything you do. Movies, uh, TV, theater. And I saw on the subway that you're doing like an artistic interpretation at the Met. And I was just wondering, what is your favorite way to stretch your muscle like that? Oh, thank you, by the way. Um, you know, everything I, I, I try to, when I choose something, it's to stretch my muscle, you know, because that's, that's exciting, because it means you're committed, it's passionate, you're collaborating. Um, I would say theater is one of the things that really feels the hardest, um, marathon wise, you know, like, and then I would say it's the horror movies. I've done the conjuring was really hard physically. Um, so I would say that and, and theater. <laughs> what is this artistic in, at the Met that you're oh, doing? Um, you know, it's, at, it's at BAM, oh, yeah. but, but she's an artist, a visual artist. Basically I'm bas- I'm doing this thing with this visual artist. I've done a few shows with her where it's basically an artist lecture. She speaks in a mic quietly. I've got a thing in my ear and I am basically, she's feeding me the lines. I'm saying them and I'm doing the slides for her show. So I start, my name is Suzanne Bocanegra. I'm an artist and I live in New York, but it's all being fed to me. It's very interesting. Um, it's a BAM in December. Oh, oh, cool. I can't wait. I think we have time for one more question right here. Hi, Lily. I was going to ask you what it's like playing Valley Salons and I shot Wendy Warhol. 
Yeah, well, that was actually another one that was tough physically that worked my muscle. Um, that was one of my best, that was one of my best work experiences. Thank you very much. Um, the collaboration with, Val with um, not Valerie, thank God she was dead. I mean, with all due respect, but she would have killed me if, if, if she was around. Um, Mary Heron, she had done so much research. There was nothing written about Valerie. She had boxes and boxes of research. We, we just collaborated, we created it together. Um, it was in the heyday of independence, so that was just, it was just the best. But thank you very much. At the time when you got the money to make an independent film, that also felt like you could make a real film, you know? Yeah. There's that, like, those, you go back and watch some of those independent films of the 90s, and it's like, oh, you guys had just had, like, seven more days to get this thing to look just that much better. It's such a, it's such a special time for movies. It really was, yeah. Um, I think that's all the time that I have, guys. Oh, well, thank <laughs> um, you. Yeah, thank Leatherface you. opens uh, October 20th Friday. nationwide. That's this Friday. This Friday. Right? I think all of you are going to go see it. I know you're going to go see it. Uh, guys, give it up for them. Yeah. Leatherface. Thank you.